audience and for such a necessary cause, one shouldn't experiment too much. So I'll just tell you one or two things which have already formed and have made complete entities in my mind. One of them told me by my mother, who was a painter and a scene designer, and who did the designs for the Sleeping Beauty in 1938, when President Lebrun paid his state visit to London in order to ensure the solidarity which got as far as Dunkirk. Uh, <laughs> at, uh, at the uh, gala, uh, my mother was told that together with Constant Lambert uh, and Dame Ninette de Valois, she was to be presented to Queen Mary, who came, of course, not alone, but accompanied by several ladies, including one, I don't know now which one it was, but I think it was the Grand Duchess of Tech Ples Nassau Gotha Coburg <laughs> and Mecklenburg Schwerin, <laughs> who lived in Hampton Court and had a tiara, which was brought out for these occasions, and followed everywhere with a very strong German accent. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my mother was told that you don't look at the Queen Mother, or she was the Queen then. You look straight forward and you wait, so my mother stood and the Queen, Queen Mary came in with her toque and went to Constant Lambert, who was at the end of the line. And my mother heard, uh, <laughs> 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 Then there was a pause, and Queen Mary moved one nearer. And my mother still looked straight ahead, and she heard, You are supposed to go to the the <laughs> then there was a pause and Queen Mary landed in front of my mother and said, Duchess following her 
now caught between a need to run after Queen Mary and to repair this omission, had just time to say to my mother, what a pity about the revolution. <laughs> honky-tonk train I'm the one that you see when you're watching the western That's me chugging by I'm the one that you see and that comes on the best end I'll tell you why, cause no other lover can ever compare with the places I think Cause I've been everywhere and I never want to stop for a moment of resting And if the fire's burning properly, the hot air order Rise and go along the latitudes that are surrounded by water Till eventually it moves on down the engine's aorta Out to the funnel where the cloud of smoke is used And now the hot air in the tubes has made the water in the boiler turn to steam Hot, hot, hot And the steam also rises and collects inside that large symbolic dome at the top Top, top But if you think that now the steam is just as hot as it is gonna get you wrong Cause it's not, not, not because this than ever it was before the heat is more you may be sure the steam now passes on into the piston cylinder and pushes the piston forwards and battles by means of mouths which reciprocate in alternation according to civil mechanical law the piston then pushes connecting rods next to the wheels the set of the rails but that's not the end of the story because then all that steam as you will have seen is blown out as exhaust thereby excluding the draft of the fire. So now I'm pumping some rather superfluous details, but that doesn't seem to you obvious, hardly worth saying. The story's over in its basic essentials. The rest is merely overlaying. What you can see for yourself quite easily, although I would just like to mention the thing on the front that always comes in handy when you want to catch cows. Woo! Wittgenstein says, doesn't he? Wittgenstein says, doesn't he? In the blue and brown books, you know. The statement fits me that slab, you see. The statement fits me that slab. It flies, it flies, is a slab. You see, there is a slab. There is a slab. Such that were I to fetch it, the statement fetch me that slab will be disjunctively denied by the opposite. You know, we feel it. Yes. <laughs> well, it seems to me, it seems to me, it seems to me, Mr. Stein has made a really rather primitive category mistake. No, no. In rather primitive category mistake, in the sense that the unfetched slab, you see, the unfetched slab, <laughs> the unfetched slab can claim to exist, you see, really no more than the unseen tree in the quad. <laughs> No, I think you're making a rather primitive category of skater. Really? <laughs> no, you're not. It's me. Oh, I'm sorry. Really? Really? Tell me, are you using yes here in the affirmative sense? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you see, I like the paper. Mm. <laughs> like it, because it has to bear on something that I'm considering myself at the moment, namely, what, what part, what, what, um, 
Roll me as philosophers have to play in this, 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 this um, confusing, heterogeneous, confusing and confused jumble of political, social, economic relations, we call society. Yes, <laughs> I mean, other people have jobs to do, don't they? I mean, what, 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 what jobs do people do these days? Yeah. They chop down trees. They chop down trees. <laughs> they drive buses. Yeah. Yeah. They play games. <laughs> now, we also play games, but as philosophers, yeah. we play language games. Yeah. Games, um, apt language. Apt language, yes, mm. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, when you and I go onto the cricket pitch, we do so secure in the knowledge that a game of cricket is in the offing. <laughs> but when we play language games, <laughs> we do so rather in order to find out what game it is that we are playing. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, yeah. why do philosophy at all? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Yeah. 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 Why? Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> in that case, you see, in that case, you see, in that case, you see, I think the burden is fair and square on your shoulders, bleeding. You see, to explain to me the exact role that philosophy has in everyday life. I mean, you do it. Yes, I think I can do this. Yes. Now, um, this morning I walked into a shop yeah. and a shop assistant was having an argument with a customer. Yeah. The shop assistant said, yes, yeah. is he? Yeah. Yeah. and yeah. the customer said, what do you mean, yes? Yeah. 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 And the shop assistant said, I mean, yes. Yeah. 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 This is very exciting. <laughs> Now here we have here we have a splendid example. I mean, every day we have a splendid example where two 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 very ordinary people are asking each other what are in essence um, a metaphysical question. Um, 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 what do you mean? Yes, I mean yes, and so forth and so forth. And where I, as a philosopher, yeah. could um, could help them. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> well, no, they were in rather a hurry. <laughs> This is the L whispering from beyond the veil. From beyond the veil. Good evening. It's one minute before opening time <laughs> up here. It always is one minute before opening time. They're forming a queue. They usually do. The newcomers form a queue. For weeks they form a queue. Well, it's not really weeks because although our watches go around, there's, there's only one time, which is one minute before opening time. <laughs> We've been uh, looking down at what's going to happen tonight. We've seen it several times. We're very sorry about Mr. Prendergast and the number nine bus. <laughs> I know he's out there listening, and I know he thinks that by knowing about it in advance, he can avoid it. But it's no good, Mr. Prendergast. You could sit in the theatre all night. <laughs> It would still get you. <laughs> Personally, I think it would be more sensible to pop out and be 
run down in the street. <laughs> At least there's some logic to that. <laughs> but if you want a bus to come careering in through the theatre, <laughs> that's up to you. That's what freedom of choice is all about. <laughs> But let's not be too morbid. Let's think of the happy stories the newspapers never print. Let's think of all the millions of people who will not be run down by buses tonight. When did you last read a story in a newspaper? Millions of people get through the day. Reasonably successfully, without being run down by a bus. <laughs> they don't print that kind of story. I'm beginning to fade slightly now. But if any of you out there below would like to get in touch, just speak to me. If you want news of your loved ones or bad news about those you hate, <laughs> speak and I shall answer ye. Do I hear voices coming to me? What about inflation? Inflation here is worse than what you have down there. <laughs> we are running at 118% and that's one minute before closing time. <laughs> We've eaten that. <laughs> what about my badgerigar? Your deceased badgerigar? Or the one you have hidden about you? <laughs> Your dead badger feels much the same as he did when alive. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Fading gradually now, <laughs> like the Liberals. <laughs> if I am never here again, don't worry, I'm still here at one minute before closing time. <laughs> uh, in Africa, trying to cross from the Republic of Dahomey, which has since changed its name to Benin. Uh, it's really the whole tragedy of Africa, is like not all of it, but some of it, the confusion and the tragedy of Africa is wrapped up in this tiny anecdote. When I was trying to get across to Nigeria, and I had rented a motor car, and there was the customs officer lying there with one or two buttons missing and a dead cigarette. And he saw me and said, Où tu vois? Je, je veux traverser la frontière. Où? I said, Nigeria, c'est le it's the only place I can go from. Tu as du feu? I said, non, je fume pas. Ah, je fume pas. Ah, tu fumes pas. Il faut, pour aller à, 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 à la Nigeria, il faut remplir une fiche. You've got to fill up a form. To do it. He saw the art. I went and fetched the form, which was covered with fly droppings. It looked like a, it looked like an 18th century document, parchment, right there. <laughs> they also asked me the name of the maiden name of my maternal grandmother. I didn't quite understand <laughs> why they should need that. And he went on like that. He said, "Tu viens d'où?" I said, "Je viens de Paris." Ah, de Paris. Tu as du feu? <laughs> fume pas. Oh, I fume pas. Oh, no. Okay. Bye. Uh, va remplir la fiche. Combien de temps tu vas? How long are you going to go to Nigeria? I said, un jour. Un? Un jour? Faut remplir deux fiches. <laughs> <laughs> so I sat down, finished, and he went, Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
Que é de fã. So I was trust the thing, and on the other side of the barrier, there was a Nigerian with uh, rather long pants, very high uh, socks, boots, a hat over his eyes, <laughs> and a waxed mustache, and every button in place. Where are you going? I said, I'm going to Lagos. What do you mean? You'll have to fill up the phone. What do you mean, Lagos? I said, I'm, I don't know where I'm going in Lagos. If you don't know where you're going in Lagos, you can't go to Lagos. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm just going to look. Well, you've got to tell me where you're going. That was a deadlock, so I said, I'm going to the Chinese restaurant. I said, <laughs> <laughs> he said, where is the Chinese restaurant? I said, it's in Broad Street. <laughs> Asked me why. He said, is the Broad Street in Malolo or in Bangu? <laughs> well, I think it's just in Malolo, I said. <laughs> why did you right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I see your passport now. What did? What did he mark here? I can't let you him on the mark. I said, well, that's what they did on the other side. I can't, I, I can't tell him, I, I can't let you in. I said, well, uh, then, uh, what? You go back and tell, no, no, I said, I'm not going back. <laughs> you are going to go back and, I said, no, I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to, have you got a car? I said, yes, I've got a car. I come with you. <laughs> we both went back and he went into the French uh, train and said, what did? And the French said, I'm going to go to the house. 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 How come you tell me that you're going away? Don't say that we must part. Don't break my aching heart. You know I loved you, baby, through the years. I've loved you.
fastest pilot you've ever had There'll come a time Don't you forget it There'll come a time You know that you regret it Oh, baby Think what you're doing You know You've gone away To be or not to be that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take up arms against the sea of trouble and by opposing end them. Die to sleep no more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache of the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Is a conservation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep. To sleep, a chance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us hope. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office. And the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietus make with a bare body. Who would hard old bear to grunt and quit and to really like but the dead are something off the right. The undiscovered country. The moon ball loads out of the car. Puddle the wolf! Puddle the wolf! Puddle the wolf! The metal. say that we are through dear I know my manners aren't polite and I insulted you last night but please forgive me the way you always do dear forgive me for being such a crashing ball last night forgive me for doing all that on the floor last night I'm really glad that you complain. Please do not think I'm not ashamed. But just forgive me and love me like before last night. Forgive me for being sick inside the car and then. Forgive me for going just that bit too far and when. You slapped my face and I saw red. To my disgrace, I hit your head, and as I said, now that you're dead, forgive me for being late at your
your cremation. <laughs> Forgive me, I left the flowers at the station. And now I'm here, I try to shed a single tear. And yet instead, I have this feeling of incredible elation. How do these things start? What are the comic moments that occur in life which uh, people with an addiction for comedy notice? Other people hear them but don't always notice them. And it reminded me also of uh, a moment in St. Louis, Missouri, where I was on the road with a play and I got home to the hotel afterwards and switched on the television. And on the local channel, I was very surprised to find Sir John Gielgud being interviewed by a local intellectual. And uh, he had just played the ages of man in half a ballpark. Um, I think there was a game going on on the other side. <laughs> and uh, the American uh, interlocutor was very, very, very highly charged. And he said, uh, well, I think we just have time for one final uh, Sir, uh, <laughs> Sir Gilgard, and, uh, I'd, I'd like to ask you this: Did you, in your long and oh, well, not only long but also very wonderful, uh, 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 did you have? Oh well, we all have a a, a, a person, a man, or oh, well, be a, a, a woman, or uh, that you point at and say, yes, this. A person is the one responsible, you know, and, and that I look now with, with a, a considerable gratitude. By then, John had understood what he was being asked. <laughs> and he said in the middle of Missouri, yes, I think there was someone. I remember with great gratitude at the Royal Academy, Claude Rains. I don't know what happened to him. I think he failed and went to America. <laughs> that is one. And the other one is also told to me, I wasn't there, by a friend who knew very well a Dutch professor who had lived a very orderly, quiet, and hard-working life, a man of rather placid temperament who devoted his whole mature existence to classifying all the paintings by Peter de Hoog and putting them into a magnificent uh, colored edition which is on the market. And now at the age of 62, he felt he had done his bit and was invited at that moment to a large English country house owned by a duke. And to his horror, uh, one can imagine the horror, saw on the wall three Peter de Hoogs that nobody had ever heard of or seen. And got very excited and said to my friend, but these are Peter de Hoogs. <laughs> oh, I don't know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> but can I ask about them? Yes, I should ask the Duke. But how does one call the Duke? You call him his grace. His grace. Yes, his grace. Ordinary. With the, Duke, with the Duke there, yeah. So he found the Duke and said, ah, his grace. <laughs> his grace, these are Peter the Hoogs. They what? <laughs> these pictures are from Peter the Hoog. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I know that one because it's painted on wood, you understand. Yes, I know, very often they were painted on wood. Yeah, that one, because when I was younger, I used to throw a ball again. <laughs> the bounce was a very true one. <laughs> I don't know that fellow at all, I nor, nor the other. I, I think they were in the other wing, and must have come over here after the fire. I never went there, and I, no, I don't. Uh, do you want to know about them? Yes, I very much appreciate this grace. Oh, well, I'll, I'll get the black book. <laughs> The butler appeared this size at the end of the gallery. Oh, Bellamy, black book, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes, said the Duke, uh, 
When the black book comes, you see, you'll find that on the frames there are little tiddlywinks or maybe paper, I can't remember, with a number on them. You tell me the number. Your eyesight is certainly better than mine. And I'll uh, look up the, uh, 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 in the black book, you see, and I'll tell you... <laughs> the book arrived. The book arrived and the Dutchman said, 64, 65, and 67. I wonder what happened to 65. <laughs> uh, what did you say they were? Peter the Who. <laughs> who marked? <laughs> what is that? A German? German painter? No, Dutch. I mean, Dutch. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 the Netherlands. I'm very really sorry. <laughs> Hong. The low countries. Oh, the low countries. Oh, oh really? He was about to shut the book when the Dutchman said, oh, Dick, before you shut the book, could you tell me where you acquired them? Uh, where, we, uh, where you acquired them? Oh, where we acquired them, yes. Right. Six. Yes, we acquired them from the from the painter.
can you help me? Good morning. Do you have um, 30 days in the San Marcan Desert with the Duchess of Kent by A-E-J, Elliot O-B-E? Well, I don't know the book, madam. Oh, never mind. How about 101 ways to start a fight? Uh, by? An Irish gentleman whose name eludes me for the moment. Uh, no, well, we haven't got it in stock. Oh, not to worry, not to worry. Can you help me with David Copperfield? Ah, yes, Dickens. No. <laughs> Make a pun? No, Edmund Wells. <laughs> I think you'll find uh, Charles Dickens wrote David Copperfield better. No, no. David Copperfield was written by Charles Dickens with two Ps. This is David Copperfield with one P by Edmund Wells. <laughs> David Copperfield with one P? Yes. <laughs> I should have said, I... Yes, well, in that case, we don't know. Funny, you got a lot of books here. Yes, but we don't have a David Copperfield with one P by Edmund Wells. So You're quite sure? Quite. Not worth just looking? Definitely not. How about Great Expectations? <laughs> yes, well, we have that. That's G-R-A-T-E, Expectations. <laughs> also by Edmund Wells. Yes, well, um, in that case, we don't have it. We don't have anything by Edmund Wells. Actually, he's not very popular. <laughs> not Nicholas Nickleby? That's K-N-I-C-K-E-R, Nicholas. No. Christmas Carol with a K? No. How about a sale of two titties? <laughs> You. Not at all. I wonder if you might have a copy of Ronaby Budge. No, as I say, we're right out of Edmund Wells. No, not Edmund Wells. Charles Dickens. <laughs> Charles Dickens? Yes. You mean Barnaby Rudge? No, Ronaby Budge by Charles Dickens. That's Dickens with two Ks, the well known Dutch. <laughs> No, well, we don't have Veronimi Budge by Charles Dickens with two Ks, the well-known Dutch author. And perhaps to save time, I should say that we don't have Carnaby Fudge by Charles Dickens. <laughs> or Farnborough Sludge by Miles Pickens. Or even Stickwick Stapers by Files Wickens with four ends in a silent queue. Why don't you try W.H. Smith? I did. They sent me here. I wonder, uh... Yes, go on. Uh, I wonder if you might have the amazing adventures of Captain Gladys Stoke pamphlet and her intrepid spaniel stig among the giant pygmies of Beckles. <laughs> Volume 8. No, we don't have it. Funny, we've got a lot of books here. Well, I mustn't keep you standing well, around. No, 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 we haven't. No, but I do no, we... no, we haven't. We're closing for lunch. No, but no, I... I'm sorry. But no, I saw it over there. I saw it over there. What? Uh, Olsen's Standard Book of British Birds. Olsen's Standard Book of British Birds? Yes. O L S E N. Yes. B I R D. Yes. Yes, well, we do have that, as a matter of fact. The expurgated version. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. The expurgated version. The expurgated version of Olsen Standard Book of British Birds? The one without the gannet. <laughs> It's in all the books. Well, I don't like them. They wet their nests. Right. <laughs> Any other birds you don't like? You're like the robin. The robin, right? The robin, the robin, the robin. There we are. Anything else? The nut hatch. The nut hatch. The nut hatch. Right. There you are. No ah. gannets. No robins. No nut hatch. There's your book. I can't buy that. It's torn. <laughs> This is a bookshop. How about Biggles Combs' his hair? <laughs> no, no, we don't know that one funny. The Gospel According to Charlie Gray? No, no, no. Try me again. Oh, I know. Ethel the Art of Art goes quantity surveying. No, no, no. <laughs> Ethel the Art of Art goes quantity surveying. Ethel the Art. <laughs> We've got it. Three, <laughs> five. We've... There we are. Quantity surveying, there's your book now. Buy it. I don't, I don't have enough money. I'll take a deposit. I don't have any money. I'll take
Don't take a check. I don't have a checkbook. I got a bank one. I haven't got a bank account. <laughs> right. I'll buy it for you. <laughs> there we are. There's your change. That's for the taxi on the way home. There's your book. There's your book. No, wait. Wait, wait. What? 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 I can't read. <laughs> Chicken and hop. Do the dance sensation and swim the nation and hop. Let's go to the hop. Let's go to the hop. Let's go to the hop. Oh, baby. Let's go to the hop. Ah, let's go to the hop. Right. You can swing the chicken, move the chicken, but it's not a move it out of hop. The way the jumping is smooth and the music is good, it's that hop. All the cats and chicks can't get their cake, it's that hop. Let's go to the hop. Oh, baby. Let's go to the hop, oh baby. Let's go to the hop, oh baby. Let's go to the hop, oh baby. Ah, let's go to the hop. Do da 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 Thank you very much. Good night.